the way of life. Okay, sweetie. A little bit to your left, please. Down to the right, please. That's good. Your drink, sir. <laughs> okay. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hello, Harold. How's it, Rudolph? What are you up to, man? Busy, very busy. Ugh, tell me another joke. What do you mean you're busy? You was probably doing nothing like usual. Why are you speaking so funny? You got sinus or something. No, but you must get yourself over here, but the raggies are cooking. No, no, seriously, right? There's been quite a few tournaments here in Jeffrey's Bay, different provinces and the Gus Colner and that. And there's been a good few um, decent fish around and lots of decent raggies, quite some nice ones. The biggest one was 172 kilos. And I know you haven't caught a decent raggie this season, so let's see. Why don't you want to come down and see if you can get your first decent one? Okay, that sounds good. James, hello the vehicle. We're going to Jeffy's Bay. Yes, sir. The scenery through the Transca is absolutely beautiful. We stopped every now and then to have a look at some of the nice mountainside and the beautiful landscape. So it's such a stunning route to travel. And it's, it's, no, it's not worth racing down to Jeffy's Bay. Take a slow drive and enjoy the beauty of nature. You know, it's all part of our sport. And I really enjoyed the drive here and we arrived here and met up with Kara. Hey, Hello. welcome to Jeffrey's Bay eventually. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, Come show us accommodation. Okay, Gerard, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did your passion for fishing start? Rudolf, I think the bug really bit me at the age of about 17 or so when I caught my first little grey shark at something good in PE there. And a year later, I joined the club. And um, I made the first EP side to ever fish a junior side at the age of 18. I was lucky enough to win the first ever SA Championships. So, you know, then it was just my passion from there on. Well, and Gerard, I also know that currently in the SA Champs uh, senior side, you are the number one ranked angler. So you're really going through a good spell. And um, you know, that's why we're here fishing with you. So we can learn about your knowledge and all of your experience within this area. Oh, Rudolf, you know how it works. You need a bit of luck, and when the luck's on your side, you just need to run with it for a bit. So hopefully I've got another few years in me, and uh, I'm really looking forward to try and put you in some big fish. Okay, so we're here a couple of years at Jeffrey's Bay this morning. It's low tide now, so what's the plan? What do you think we're going to do? Well, it's our third day of east now, so you know, the easterly wind usually brings on the fish. The water's a little bit chilly. It's around 16 degrees. Chilly, it's damn freezing yeah. for me. <laughs> <laughs> See all the jellyfish uh, washing out with the cold water in the east. Yeah. Uh, we've got low tide now, so uh, I think maybe we take a chance. Even though the water's a little bit chilly, we're going to try some drop shot. Maybe we can get one or two cobbies. Well, we've walked up approximately 4 k's now and um, we felt the water in the bay at a couple of years we walked on and we guess it at about 16 degrees but up here it's freezing, it's so cold you actually don't want to walk in the water your ankles start aching and even Gerard says it's pointless fishing for cob in this cold water he's going to make a few throws but it's, he reckons 13, 14 degrees which is way too cold for cob we should get a raggy in this cold water put a bait up to him and see what happens
Okay, so that uh, little session this morning was a bit difficult. Let's see, you know, when you, Gerard haven't been down the beach for a long time, he's been busy guiding teams and stuff on the other side of, of Jeffrey. So we've learned the water is very cold down there. Um, so what we're going to have to look for is some warmer water. And uh, according to Gerard, if we find warmer water, we'll find the fish. For these little raggies, you don't need a fancy bait. Just a big ball of meat. We've got some yellow tail here with a mackerel cut open inside out on top of it. So nothing fancy, just a nice big smelly bait. As we're about to give up on these raggies, looking for a spot where the water's a bit warmer, we found a few here between the bricks, a small little hole that seems to be holding a pocket of warmer water. Thought I'd just drop one and uh, got a smallie on here, so. Well, this is uh, what we call a pup. It's a young 45, 50 kilo fish. So, um, not the giant we're looking for, but it's a start. There's icy water, they're nice and strong. And this one's got a very big scar here. Yeah? Something had a bite at it years ago and it survived it. It's probably a big great white or big zambi or something. Tiny little reggae here. Yeah? Missed him the first time, but luckily he came back. It's a proper reggae, yeah? That was a close to 100 kilo fish. Been around 100 kilo. Oh, well, put a sharp hook on and try again. <laughs> Let's see if it's third time lucky. That one that bit my sink off, and I missed one the next one, and then the hook fell out after that. So let's see if I can get this one. Maybe my luck has changed. We're fishing in Fell Reef here, so you need a, a reel with a solid drag, and this pen torque has got a serious, serious drag, so it's got lots of stopping power. In it. Same size as the one that we've got there earlier on. And as you can see, there's a bit of a slant on the water. So um, it takes a bit of time getting him up and down until you get your timing right to get them out. So 50 kilos, 48, 50 kilos. Okay, Khara, thanks a lot for a good day. It was, oh, cheers. It was hard work, no? What do you think the reason was for the fishing being so quiet today, Khara? Rudolf, we uh, felt the water here in the Tokomiki this morning and felt all right. I thought we had a chance maybe with an odd cob in there. And then by the time we walked our four k's up the beach and we tried to wade into the water and our feet started burning, we realized <laughs> it's not going to work, eh? Yeah. So yeah, the water just dropped too quickly again. I think it was maximum 14, 14 and a half today. So it was just too cold. Yeah. This morning when we were down at the beach there, it was so cold, you said we need to find the warmer water. And that's why we went up to paradise on the southern side in between those long reeds where there's pockets of warm water sort of caught up in the reeds there. And we found those smaller raggies there. 
So basically, our game plan's got to be to find the warm water for as long as, as this cold water's around. Oh, Rudolph, that's spot on. Eh? Um, when the sea goes to cold, you can find just a, even if it's just a, a degree or two too warmer, it makes a difference, you know. The fish seem to run away from the colder water and then wherever there's a pocket trap, that's the last place they get pushed in. So, so maybe we'll have to look at it tomorrow. I think with this west blowing now, it's like a semi-gale out here and they forecast a proper gale tomorrow. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to try and find water one or two degrees warmer. Maybe we can have a good day. Well, that's it. I'm not going to argue with the guru. He's going to put us on some good fish tomorrow. Um, as Kara said, we've got a gale west coming through now. The advantage of the gale west is that that warms the water up a little bit. And that's what we need, a few degrees warmer water. 17, 18 degrees, Kara. Sort of perfect, perfect, perfect conditions yeah. here. Our second morning here in uh, Eastern Cape, Jeffrey's Bay. We're here at the world famous Super Tubes surfing area. And Gerard, what's the game plan for today? Oh, Rudolf, we've got a big cold front, as you can see, that's moved in. And um, the wind's blowing fairly strong. Uh, semi gale and it's going to blow up to 35, 40 knots later. So uh, I think maybe if we look for a bit of protection, go to the deep water spots with St. Francis, you'll have the west in your back. Water's still cold, so there might not be a lot of pools. But uh, maybe we can get one or two of those big pools putting out big baits and just setting it out. Okay, Rudolf, we're here at Natal Rock at Cape St. Francis. Um, as you can see, we're a little bit sheltered here. <coughs> It's still a little bit west-northwest, but it should swing to southwest later. Spending a few hours on the rock here, sitting, chatting about everything but fishing. The weather's awful. Gale, gale, west wind. And uh, as we're about to give up, we had a pick up here. Feels like a decent fish. As you can see, it's a very sharp, rocky spot we're fishing. So I'm not going to force this fish. I'm going to just let it swim out there, get a bit tired, and then I can try and bully it into a, the area where we're going to land it. This fish is just hugging the bottom, a big flat fish, and it managed to go around a, a rock. My line stuck in the muscle, so I don't know, it's very difficult to try and get the line out the muscles, but let's hope we get lucky here. We need a lot of luck to get this fish out. This is the result. A 50 plus kilo steer nose. One of those exotic fish we came here to Jeffrey's Bay area for. And uh, I cannot be happier. So this fish is riddled with, with thorny, spiky bits. And if he smacks you with that tail, you're gonna cry. It looks like barbed wire on there or razor wire. And even this nose, the spear nose, where it gets its name from. I'm holding it like that, my fingers are pricking at the bottom. It's full of little thorns, the whole body of it. And uh, I don't think many sharks are going to try and eat this fish. It's too spiky and aggy. And while we're sitting here chatting, a sea otter just came and said hello to us. He came like three meters from us. 
We've seen him here a few times, but I've never ever seen one come up to us like this, so it's absolutely amazing to see. It's so nice to be in nature and enjoy the fishing, and it's all about the fishing and the life around fishing, and these are all special things you always remember. Before we headed back to Seashell's luxury accommodation, Gerrit decided to take me for a drive down to St. Francis Harbour and explain to me a little bit about the jockey industry and how it fits into the whole setup here at St. Francis Bay. Port St. Francis, as you can see, is um, the, the main port in the Eastern Cape to process and service the squid boats and the squid industry. And for us here in Jeffreys Bay and the St. Francis area, even parts of P, it's quite a big industry and it's very important for revenue, etc., and employment. You can see where all the expensive chocker is coming from. Every chance that the chocker that's in your bait box and your freezer at the moment has come from one of these boats here. They're getting ready for the opening, which is in about two weeks' time. And uh, yeah, then it's all systems go. Hopefully they catch a lot of chocker and the price can come down a little bit for us anglers. It's our third morning here in our quest for those big Eastern Cape fish, those big raggies and some flatfish. And uh, the weather is still a bit miserable this morning, a little bit better than yesterday. The cold front's still here though, it's gale force west winds. And uh, Gerard brought us to another nice little hideaway spot this morning and we're going to carry on looking for those big fish. Okay, the tackle I'm going to use is my Pen Talk 40. Uh, it's filled with Berkeley Trilene Max 0.50, the hive is orange. Uh, it's the same line, just in a different color that Rudolf pulled that big flatfish with yesterday, so the line's very, very strong, I know that. Right, so we both put out uh, throw baits. Cut out, but built that nice raggy bait. I cast it just a plain uh, yellow tail head. And now for my big rod, which I'm going to put a slide out, two big tenor hooks. 150 pound nylon coated, about a meter long onto my slide. I've just taken a whole yellow tail, cut the gills open a bit, cut the tail open, gave it a little bit of a flap. What's awesome about this Jeffreys Bay sort of area is that it's one of the few places in South Africa you're going to be able to fish and still catch fish in bad conditions like this where it's gale force west, water's not right, conditions aren't right, you still manage to catch fish and that's what makes this place so special. Massive gut capacity. The line is uh, Pen Super X, 0.55. So there's a surprise. It's actually a diamond on a on a whole chocker. So I've got that one totally wrong. 
Well done, Karen. Yeah. This is actually a good sign. This is a sign that the water is starting to warm up for the west. So this is what we've been looking for. Definitely, yeah. So that's excellent news. This time of the year, as I said uh, before, this is close season for the chocker. They're breeding, they're coming really close. And I've often seen it this time of the year where the chocker works quite well because the fish are actually zoned into that, that smell and the, the chocker. It's like a natural bait to come out. Okay. I've got the hook out, but the diamond's got my fingers, so you must not just relax <laughs> until, uh, until he lets go. <laughs> to release a diamond just at the back of the jaw, you can actually get a good grip on him and um, makes it easy to drag it back in the water. At all costs, try to keep your fingers out of the breathing holes. Um, it does a lot of damage to them and they must probably won't survive. So just make sure you grab them before the, uh, behind the door. Drag them in and just make sure that he actually lets go of your fingers before you try to get away from them. To another fish here. The fish are just starting to cook now. Karat's getting a bite. My other rod's getting a bite. The tide's turning, it's pushing. Water's warming up. So things are happening here in the Eastern Cape. I'm hoping this fish is that one we're looking for. Very fast, he's got way to it. Very happy specific one. Well, Gerard, that was such an awesome trip. Thanks a lot. Three days of excellent fishing, although we had terrible conditions, you know, we proper, proper stormy conditions. So we did quite well. We got some nice fish and we ended up with that, that big rain we were looking for. So all I can say is thanks a lot for putting us on the fish, showing us all those little hideaway spots from the bad weather. And uh, I had an awesome time. I'm oh, glad you enjoyed it, Rudolph. I was panicking a bit at one stage <laughs> so we won't achieve our goals, you know, with the ice cold water and then that massive cold front. But right in the end, you pulled it through there with the excellent fish. So you're happy, I'm happy, and I hope the viewers are going to enjoy the footage. I'm sure they are going to. And uh, it just, this place is just so versatile. I'm, you know, every time I come here, I'm amazed how versatile the fishing is here. You can fish in any conditions, any wind, any weather, and there's always a spot to fish. And that's what makes this Jeffy's Bay area so special. 
Yeah, I know it's 100 percent there, you know. Lots of either way spots, gale east, gale west, rough sea, flat sea, cold water, warm water, with all the species we've got here. You can always find a place to go and pull one or two fish to keep yourself busy, you know. So I'm very fortunate to live here in Jeffreys Bay and I love it. I don't think I'll move anywhere else anytime soon. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> no, you're very lucky. Well guys, this is the end of the first few days here in, in our little journey through the Eastern Cape Jeffreys Bay. Follow us in the next show. We're going to be some nice, exciting fishing again here with Carrot.